I'm being joined now by Channel's Data Consultant, Babajiro Gusovo. This is a topic you're really interested in, I'm sure. The IMF recently saying that we should remove a subsidy on petrol, uh, and that money can be invested into sectors such as education and health. Is this good advice coming at this time? Do we have any data benefiting, any data on those who are benefiting from the subsidy? So perhaps we should ask how many cars are in Nigeria? Mm. And I'll share that information with you, and I think it will surprise you. Well, you know, it's Easter, and while Christians celebrate the rising of Christ, nobody really wants to celebrate the rise of petrol. Here's what I mean. The rising isn't the problem. It's what the rising means. And so the rising of Christ means good news. The rise, the rise of petrol signals bad news. And so there are three questions we should ask. The first is, who are those really consuming the fuel? The second question is, if it's fully deregulated, what will be the average price of fuel? And the third question, perhaps the most important, is what should government do? So let's start with the first. Who are those consuming the fuel? And the information we have from the Federal Road Safety Corps and the National Bureau of Statistics tells us that there are 11.8 million vehicles on Nigerian roads. But that's not what you should keep in mind. The evidence shows that more than half of the vehicles in Nigeria are commercially owned vehicles. In other words, you have more Danfos and commercial vehicles on Nigerian roads than you have private vehicles. Mm. And we see that we only have 4.9 million privately owned vehicles out of 100 million adults. And there will be more. Oh, sure. When, once there's prosperity, there will be more. But what it means is that we are subsidizing commercial transportation. One, that's one of three subsidies. Not really the privately owned vehicles because less than 5% of families in Nigeria, less than 5% of individuals own vehicles. So the first out of three subsidies is we are subsidizing commercial transportation. The second subsidy is what people call generators. Like a lot of families still buy generators. But listen carefully to this. A subsidy on generators isn't really a subsidy on generators. We, we buy generators because we don't have adequate electricity supply. So a subsidy on generators should actually be called a subsidy on failure. So the first is the evidence shows we're subsidizing commercial transportation. The second is we have a subsidy on failure. The third is we say there's a subsidy because of smuggling. Well, listen carefully to this. What is the cost of smuggling? Corruption. So smuggling really, when we subsidize subsidy, when, when there's smuggling and fuel goes through the borders, what we are doing is we're subsidizing corruption. So that brings us to the summary of three types of subsidies. Subsidy on commercial transportation, subsidy on failure because we are buying generators, and the third is subsidy on corruption. We are subsidizing corruption because a lot of petrol still goes through our borders. So are we being helped by the IMF, uh, IMF advice, or is this something we should ignore? You know, with the IMF advice, there are school, two schools of thought. Some say the IMF has a hidden agenda. Some say, no, it is purely altruistic. So let's look at the two schools of thought. Is there a hidden agenda? And one of the ways to find out if there's a hidden agenda is to look at, you know, what they say about he who pays the piper. And so in 2015, what was, how much external debt did the federal government owe foreign um, borrowers? The evidence shows that 2015, federal government debt, external debt, was $7.3 billion, Amarji. In three years, as at the end of 2018, external debt owed by the federal government had moved from $7.3 billion to $21 billion. In other words, in three years, external debt owed by the federal government had tripled. And so clearly, they have a stake in the economy. Why do they have a stake? When fuel prices go up, let's connect the dots. Inflation happens. When there's inflation, there's a weakening of the currency. And once the currency weakens, it simply means those that hold dollars, those foreign investors that have lots of dollars in their possession can now buy more Naira denominated assets at a cheaper price. So you have more dollars and once the Naira is weakened, then your dollars can allow you to buy more, more Naira. In other words, the first school of thought are concerned because they point to neo-colonialism. But however, that is just one perspective. 
The second perspective is to look at how much money goes into this subsidy. Over 100 billion naira every year. 100 billion naira is more money, is much more money than what we invest in the National Judicial Council. It is more money than even the National Assembly collects per annum. In other words, full subsidy is the fourth arm of government. So if you now have the judiciary, you have the executive, you have the legislative, now we have the subsidy. Bottom line, Babajide, what exactly are you saying? Heed IMF advice or not, continue with the subsidy or remove the subsidy? There is no right, no right answer. And so while the IMF thinks that there's a right answer, we have multiple answers. What the government needs to do is three things. First is we need to be very transparent about the subsidy. How much is being paid and let's thoroughly examine the value chain. The second is if we choose to fully deregulate, the government now needs to be able to tell Nigerians what will all that money be used for. And third and perhaps final is maybe we should put it to vote. Perhaps we should have a vote of some sort, a referendum, and let's really let Nigerians tell us what they would prefer. That'll will it be subsidy exit or will the subsidy stay? <laughs> that would be that would be a first uh, a referendum. Thanks again, Babajide. But let's not be led by our fears. We need to yeah. be hopeful and we need to make decisions in the interest of the common man. That is the lesson. And that's the bottom line of the Easter message today. Thanks again for joining us on the program. A happy Easter to you. Well, happy Easter. <laughs> let's look at if the prices will rise or the prices will stay. Of course.